Hello everyone. Let's start this session on Yammer. Thank you for joining. We'll keep the session to 15 minutes and after that we will take questions. While the session is going on, you can post questions using the question and answer window. This is a quick introduction of what I do. I'm not going to read it out. Just go through it quickly. So for question and answer on your browser or mobile on top, you will see an icon which looks like a speech bubble. Click on that and then choose ask a question. If required, mention a slide number. We have been following all tools in Office 365 and today it's Yammer's turn. Now you must be wondering there are already tools which we are using for communication and collaboration. For example, we are already using Outlook and Teams. Why have another tool? That's a good question. So let's address that first. Why another app? The reason is. Why another tool? Because there are situations where there is a large group of people. There is no common goal. It's not an urgent kind of communication, but it's still required. That is the lacuna which Yammer is designed to fulfill. So let's take some situations and then you will understand better. Here, first thing, I have a question. If I know whom to ask the question, I will talk to them, chat with them or send them a mail. But if I don't know whom to ask the question, but I know that someone in the company will know the answer, then what do I do? That is where Yammer comes. Another situation is I have a HR policy to be finalized. I have created the draft. I need inputs from all people before I finalize it. Where do I put it? That's another situation where Yammer is useful. Like that, as we go along, you will realize specific instances or situations or use cases where Yammer can be relevant. I'm not going to go through all these examples right now. You will come across them as we go along. So these are the five broad topics under which Yammer is useful. One is employee engagement. Today we use intranets, we use emails, we use notice boards, we use different kinds of mailers and campaigns. That is the role Yammer can play very well. Something which is very relevant today. Everyone is working from home and people, departmental heads, CEOs, want to communicate with everyone, telling them about business continuity, new processes, new ways in which we are trying to handle business from remote locations. All that requires one way communication to everyone. That is another place where Yammer can be useful. We saw Teams live event. Yammer can also be used for that. Other thing is open ended knowledge sharing. Any kind of open transparent communication, it's like a notice board for the company, which is not just someone puts something on notice board and others see they can also interact, which is important. And then if you want to ask open ended things to people, for example, we are introducing a new product. I want to ask ideas from people for the branding, sort of crowdsourcing, but within the company also done best with Yammer. So let's go ahead and see how Yammer works. When Yammer doesn't need to be deployed, when you have Office 365, you already have Yammer. So what happens when we have Yammer? It gives you a group, a pre-created group called All Company, where everyone is already a part of it. All that you have to communicate with people is we have Yammer. We are going to use it for these reasons and just go there every day. I'm sure there are companies and probably you do it yourself where there is an intranet. The intranet home page is a very popular thing. First thing people come to when they come to office is of course start Outlook and maybe also go to that intranet home page. So third thing you can go to is that all company group. Latest happenings are shown there. It's like a feed. It's like a Facebook for your company. So simplest thing you can start with is announcements. So today 
we have introduced a new system for connecting to your database. Earlier, that database was accessible to you only within the company, but now with remote work happening, that access was gone. Now I need to inform people how to do it. Instead of sending a mail to everyone, just put it on all company. Everyone can see it. Similarly, different kinds of things, all kinds of announcements can be put there. Here is a sample announcement. This is how Yammer looks. You can customize it. You can put your own logo. You can have different kinds of stuff there. So this is sample announcement. Now people can't just see the announcement. This could have been done on intranet as well, but here we have likes, share, reply and other options as well. So you can actually quantify the engagement people have done. You can also see the how many people have seen it even though they have not interacted. So how does the structure of Yammer work? As I said, this one called all companies already there, but you can create groups based on different levels of functionality. There are two types of groups, private and public. If you remember in teams also, you could create a public team and a private team. Same thing. It sounds similar, but I'll tell you the difference later. So what is a private group? You create a group, invite people, only invitees can see it. Public means you create an open ended group and everyone can join it. So for example, health could be an open ended group within the company. CSR could be an open ended group in the company like that. Now from a visibility point of view, once you are a part of a group, you are ac having access to it, but who can be a part of the group? That's the other idea. So who can be a part of group? Obviously any internal employee, but that is not the restriction. You can add external people as well. So when you create a group, it can be a mix of internal as well as external people as well. How do you create a group? Very simple. Go to Yama and then create a group. You give it a group name, put a logo, put some color pattern and that's it. It's very simple. Once you start a group, you can post things on it. What can you post? Announcement, polls, stuff like that. And then it just goes on and on. It's a live feed. Where can we see it? On mobile, on desktop, all the places. Here is an example of a poll. I have asked some question. People are going to answer the question. They can see the results. I can also see the results, but the results can be downloaded only by the person who created it. You can also use this for praising or acknowledging good things which happen in the company. Now you will say, why do I need that? Suppose a sales guy closed a large deal. Anyway, everyone in the sales team gets a mail from the sales head saying very nice job done. The difference there is who knows about that great work done. Only people who are on the mail, which typically is departmental. If something good happened in the company, why shouldn't the entire company know about it? Now the problem is as a sales head, am I going to send a mail to 20,000 people or even 200 people does not make sense. So that's where Yammer is good for appreciating good things. Other very useful thing for Yama, as I mentioned earlier, is sharing knowledge. If I found something, if I want to ask something, either way I can use Yama. So if I put something, maybe people like it, maybe they reuse it. So the same situation, when I close that particular large deal, if the salesperson says how that large deal was closed, other salespeople can use the same methodology and in an informal manner, knowledge management is happening and the knowledge base also gets created over time. So any new person coming in the company, maybe a intern in sales can go through that and learn faster. Now you'll ask me all this could have been done on intranets as well. Why are we using another tool? Good question. The answer is very simple. Intranet home page is the most popular. Other things are just links and only on demand you go there because intranet is created by few people and for most of us it is read only. You can't change the structure. Even if you can put announcements there, there is limited space for announcement and no interaction is typically possible. 
because the home page real estate is really precious. So that is where Yammer gives you the flexibility. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, it's available on all devices. So if you want to use it well, it's a good idea to install it on mobile as well. You just go to the App Store and install it. It's a part of Office 365. Now, as I said, one of the things which we do in today's world or we need to do is CXOs or leaders or departmental heads. Anybody wants to address large number of people. That is best done using Yammer. Now, what is the difference between a live event done in Yammer and live event done in Teams? Technically or behind the scenes, they are the same. The difference is what you're attending today is a, an event created using Teams. So what are you getting? You're getting a Q&A option and you need not be from my company. In case of Yammer, by default, the event will be open to company employees only and the Q&A is much better and what Q&A is happening can be shown on a separate Yammer feed. In fact, I have seen companies doing town halls where in lobbies or in cafeteria or in conference rooms, people are sitting, CEO is addressing people. They are not seeing it on their desktop. They are sitting in a room and it's on projection and the, on one side they are seeing the person speaking or addressing and they are seeing the Yammer feed as well. That gives you a very good kind of connectivity and it gives you much better interaction. I have also seen this being used in offsites. In an offsite for a customer, I can't tell you the name, they handled it very well. There was a sort of a commentary going on all the time and a Yammer feed was always on. So that Yammer feed was displayed on a separate screen on stage all the time. So people could take photos, they could put feedback, they could put requests, for questions for next session, all kind of live interaction can happen. So better quality communication. The other thing is during leadership communication, it need not always be a live broadcast. Anytime a leader wants to engage with people, today there are limited choices. With all company always being there and everyone looking at the all company thing every day, this is a very easy method of sharing ideas, thoughts, concerns from the top management to all staff. So that's leadership engagement, which is not necessarily an event, but it's still continuous engagement. And of course they can see the interactions and that gives them an idea about how they can improve their interaction or engagement with employees. This kind of open interaction is difficult to do using any other tool which we have covered so far whether within Microsoft or otherwise. So interaction keeps happening like we are used to in any social media context and it's archived, it is available. Now one of the concerns because this interaction is open is especially HR people or senior leaders are worried that suddenly we are allowing everyone to post things. Till now that was not possible. So anybody can put anything and everyone can see it. That sounds very dangerous because people can put anything they feel like, but don't worry, people are not stupid. Just because you did not implement Yammer, do you think if employees want to do some bitching, they can't do it? Of course they know how to do it. So if you have an open forum and everyone knows my name is going to be below that post, people are not stupid to post dumb things there or they're not going to creep there or they're not going to put objectionable content there. So although moderation as a facility is available, don't worry about the misuse. Try to use it effectively rather than worry about misuse. So Bob basic claim to fame Yammer has, it's open, it's transparent and it's efficient. Very little manual effort is involved in posting things and interacting things or just keeping abreast with what is happening. So what kind of groups you should create? All company is all company, but there could be different interest groups. It could be by department, it could be by topic, it could be by areas of interest and so on and so forth. You can choose what you want. Public groups are visible. Anybody can join private groups or by invitation only. You can get a detailed statistics about how groups are being used and then you can optimize your approach. So how do you create a group? Very simple, just go to group, 
create either an internal or external group, put the group members and choose the type. As simple as that. For example, if you use it for ideation, again, the structure is similar, so it's predictable. It's very easy to use because people are already used to social media and now they're getting that kind of social interaction within their company, which makes them feel more at home. Now, when it comes to sharing files, there is a very common mistake which is done. Many times people post files directly on YAML. Although technically it is possible, as we have seen before, files belong to either OneDrive or Teams or SharePoint. My files go to OneDrive, project specific files go to Teams, and departmental files should go to SharePoint. So don't disturb that part. If you want to share a file on YAMA, first post it in the right place and then share a link. That is a better option. Now, the next topic is different scenarios. Many of these we have covered, but now that you have a better understanding of how YAMA works, all these and more can be the places for using YAMA effectively. Why am I saying pricing? Because very often changing price structure of a product or a range of products is a very sensitive thing. Before we finalize it, it shouldn't only be the sales team who gets consensus. You should get consensus from everyone in the company. So any change which is consensus driven is an ideal use case for YAMA. So here is an example. I have posted a draft policy. People can put comments, they can debate, they can discuss, they can object to it, but it's a link so people can't edit anything. And then whoever is creating the policy can get better understanding about what is good, what is bad, and they can tweak it. And in a short period of time, they can they can still create an effective policy. Private group. Again, similar structure. You create a private group only by invitation and that's it. External group, again, similar structure. The only thing is we can add external people in it. Otherwise, everything is same. The external parties do not need to have YAMA. They just need a browser and an internet connection. They can participate without any additional expenditure. So just four steps to create an external group. Who should be a part of external group? That depends on situations. Maybe all these and more. Some groups can be ongoing. For example, dealers and distributors can be an ongoing group for discussing concerns or auditors could be only when external audit is happening only during year end or quarter end. So longevity of the group is context driven. Now all this does sound overlapping with teams, so now it is a good time to tell you the crux, the difference between teams and YAMA. In both cases, you create something which has a group of people and you work with them and interact with them. The difference is the context. In YAMA, when I'm discussing something with people, there is an intention of collaboration, but there is no common time bound goal. So to give you an example to illustrate this better, let's say I have a group of dealers and I want to have an open communication channel with them. That is best done using a Yammer group. The intention is to have an open communication, but let's say I'm implementing a dealer management system and I'm doing a pilot with five dealers. That should not happen in Yammer. That should happen in teams because it's not just posts and sharing. It is files, it is support, it is tasks, and a common goal with a time bound context. So that is the correct differentiation between YAMA and Teams. So as you know, we have multiple tools, but depending on the context, we use the right tool. So if it's in a group, not urgent, there is an intent of collaboration, but not time bound goal, then we use YAMA. So that's it for today. As far as YAMA goes, now let's take questions. Yes, Ravi Kumar is asking, can we have both internal and external people 
in the same group on Yammer. Absolutely. There can't be a completely external group. Then what's the point? This is for corporate communication. So someone from internal has to initiate the group. At least one person from internal who created the group has to be a part of so called external group. Janaka is asking how Yammer can interact with Outlook. Yes, a lot of notifications and integration of Outlook is there and in next month more integration is coming. So I didn't talk about integration. Let me take this opportunity. Yammer is a full fledged part of Office 365. So if you want to implement intranet and as I told you Yammer gives you more interactivity, but I want people who go to intranet to notice that there is something happening in Yammer. Yammer is a web part. Yammer integrates with Outlook. In Teams, you can have a tab for a particular Yammer group. So all these products are designed to work with each other. All right, so I'll wait for a few more seconds. If there are no questions, then we'll call it a day. In the meantime, let me explain what happens further. Tomorrow we are going to cover same topic, same time stream, and there are five more sessions coming up. If you want to see the schedule, you click on this link. Or you can't, you can go to this link or scan this code. When you go to that page, you will get two types of links. One is to join the live session and one is to add it to calendar. If you add it to calendar in that calendar entry, also you have the link to live session. And all the videos, including this one, will be uploaded to YouTube. And this is the playlist address in YouTube. So I guess there are no more questions, so we will close for today. So thank you, Shesham, Anindo, and Zeus for helping me run this series of sessions and hope to see all of you tomorrow again for the stream session. So that's it for now. Thank you.